what is going on lads, it's Electric Shock here, and today I bring you guys the 8th episode of my Atlanta United recruitment. So now I'm going to pump out the games in these episodes, I think I need to push out for 3 games every single episode, so there'll be less highlights, but I just want to really grind it out and get into the championship and the Premier League as fast as I can. This first game we are playing Derby in the, I think it's the Capital One Cup 4th round, so we were using quite a young team, as you can see down the bottom eight down the bottom and luckily Bruce Chate did get on a very quick counter attack and he does make the most of it sending us 1-0 up and that was a very nice goal we do like to score a lot of goals in the counter attack Derby did have a few chances to equalize uh, during the first half they should have scored here don't know why they decided to cut it back like playing some ultimate team game and because of their missed chances, we're going to go up and counter-attack them. Bruce Chitay is in on goal, and he's taken out from behind. A clear penalty there. There are no complaints by the Derby man. Could have almost been a yellow card. Yep, it was a yellow card. And Pablo Sanchez did step up to give us the 2-0 lead. So he scored two penalties, I think, both in the Capital One Cup. And we're in the driving seat now. We just need to play out for the win. And we should be going through to the quarterfinals, which is quite good in the debut season. And as you can see, we... I've only had two shots, we've scored them both luckily, been in their possession, but Derby really haven't haven't had any chances either. They did have more chances to bring the game back, but unfortunately for them, they hit the post there. And then in the 50th minute, a ball was over hit, not really going to chest out Eugene Galekovic at all. And we did throw on a few subs just to finish the game out. Malik did come on, he had a glorious chance, couldn't take it and seal the game, but it didn't matter. Yeah, we still go through to the next round. Unfortunately, I did skip it again, so I'm going to have to make up my own votes. And this time, I'm going to give three votes to Bruce Chate, man of the match by a mile. Two votes to Pablo Sanchez, and also a vote to Benjamin Warland, who was playing his debut. So, he kept a clean sheet. I felt like he did enough to get a vote. There was no other standout players. Now, this second game is a very big one. We are playing Barnsley, and they are sitting in third position. So, you can see we're on 19 points. They're on 17. We need to pick up three points here, hopefully. Away from home, it's going to be a tough one, though. There's also a tough game in the third one, and that's going to be against Bradford City. Now, this is the team we are using. So, Eugene Gillespie, is, of course, in the net. Then we've got Elrich Bugar, Jeju, Gumston, Asayas, Botain, Kuruska, Ferreira, Siri, no, McGlinchey, and James Wilson. So, it's arguably our strongest 11, apart from Syria. We did get an early chance through here on Botain. Tries to make the keeper. Didn't really achieve that though. And in the 10th minute, James Wilson does go on a nice counter attack. He's in on goal and he just pulls that one wide. That would have been a glorious goal by the English striker. But he unfortunately just missed the back post. And they did have a chance to get their goal. But it did hit the post, luckily for us. And then Eugene Galekovic scrambles it over for a corner. In the 20th minute, they pushed even more. Brown plays it into Digby, he pays it back to Treacy, and I think it's Treacy, he scores 1-0. Not the greatest of starts by us, but it was a very nice goal. The defenders were drawn out, and one little ball through, and we were down. And then they got a few more chances to take a 2-0 lead. Couldn't take it, though, and luckily for us, we were still in this game at half time. You can see we had enough shots, we just need to start a... We just needed to take someone in the second half. The possession really wasn't there because we're playing away from home. But we just needed to take one of our chances in the second half. And in the 50th minute, Wilson plays it into Fabio Ferreira. And he's going to slot it in the back of the net. Scores in front of the travelling fans to bring this game back to 1-0. A very good goal by the Portuguese player. It's actually a really nice ball, James Wilson. Not sure what the right back was. It? No, left back was... So far, you know, behind Ferreira, and he played him so far offside, and Ferreira just going to slot that one and keep us in this game. We did get a few chances to take the lead. James Wilson just had too many steps. If he shot it first time, we probably would have scored the winner. So this one is going to end 1-0. That is another draw in the league one, but I'm going to have to take it because I'm still picking up points against these top teams. And, you know, I think we've drawn... Nearly as much as we've won this year, but we have not lost a game. So we're still picking up points. That's the main thing. And as you can see by these stats, it's a very even game. Apart from the possession, you know, we we played all right. We just need we just need to score some more goals. And the votes in this game, there's going to be three votes to Jeju, two votes to James Wilson, who did create a lot of chances, and also a vote to Fabio Ferreira. 
Now we have to focus our minds on what is going to be one of the biggest games of the whole year. This is Adelaide United versus Bradford City at Cooper Stadium. Top of the ladder clash, we are in second if you're wondering. Bradford are in top position. And anyone who has any interest in the League One was watching this game. You know, there was a lot of attention on this game. A lot of media talking about this game. A lot of people talking about it. Because these were the two form teams of the competition. The two teams that were playing the best football. And the two teams on the top of the ladder. So you can see by our team, we didn't have the strongest team out. You know, some of these players wouldn't be in the first 11. Like McGowan, Maroney, Watson and Sanchez. But, you know, it's still a strong team. We still got likes of Jitte and Syria and McGlinchey up front to hopefully score us a goal. But at half time, this game, there was no chances to show you because the first half was, it was just boring. Just have a look at these stats. There was no shots by myself. We only had 33% possession. Bradford had three shots. Couldn't manage to get one on target though. So, there was just a game that all the players were nervous, didn't really want to make any mistakes, and that meant that no one was really pushing for that goal. We did decide to push for it, though. Pablo Sanchez did take the volley. He couldn't put it past the keeper, though. It was a bit of a weak effort, but that was one of the best chances in this game. McGlinchey also had a chance to make the score 1-0 and break the deadlock, but he put that one down the keeper's throat. And our best chance did came when we played the ball out to Pablo Sanchez out in the right wing. He decided to cut in, play into Bruce Chute on his weak foot, and his finesse shot went straight at the keeper's gloves. And then, unfortunately for Pablo Sanchez, he was offside. Bradford's best chance did come very late on. They hit the crossbar or the post, and we eventually cleared it. So that was their best chance. And it's going to end nil all. There was not many chances at all. How many times have I said chances? There was just, neither team couldn't find the back of the net. A lot of players were showing nerves. And as you can see by these votes, you know, Pablo Sanchez was man of the match. There was also two votes to Galekovic for keeping a clean sheet. And Dylan Smith also got a vote for filling in the roles of Marcelo Carusca. So that's going to bring this episode one, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. And I'll speak to you guys soon. Have a lovely day and goodbye.